is there any relationship between a person's politics and the web browser they choose to use? It seems like a crazy thing, right? I, I just posted this article over at conservativenerds.locals.com. Uh, go, go read the article over there if you want all the, all the charts and, and everything else we're about to, to look through. But it's, it's a worthwhile question to ask. There have been so many, uh, I want to say, conflicts and, and disagreements within the tech world about politics over the last few years where, where one company over here will discriminate against people of a particular political persuasion over there and certain groups will feel alienated or pushed out of the way and, and we will hear talk of people moving from one platform or one, or one piece of software to another. But, but what does that really look like? Is that really happening? So when I sent out and created the Great Tech Industry Demographic Survey of 2024, where I surveyed 7,200 people across a huge, huge cross-section of communities within the tech world, people who worked in the IT industry and who, or who considered themselves to be computer nerds, fans of tech YouTubers, tech podcasters, authors, writers, social media people, and the like, uh, all over the political spectrum, all over the, the tech spectrum, Linux users, Mac users, Windows users, everywhere. Like, we got it all over the place. Over 7,000, 7,200 people, uh, several times bigger than, than most of even the largest of the, of the big political election polling that gets done. You, you, I don't know if most people realize how small the polling size is for some of the, the biggest polls that are out there. Like the Gallup polls a lot of times are like, like 1,000, 1,200 some odd people. And we got a lot of data, 46 questions, over 7,000 respondents all over the map. And what we came away with among a lot of other things that we're already learning, is that, yeah, yeah, a person's politics and a person's choice of web browser is directly related and in a surprisingly, surprisingly big way. Uh, let's just dive right into it here. Uh, this, is, this is a graph. Uh, this is a graph, obviously. It shows the people in blue. And for those of you listening to the podcast, go go watch the video on lunduke.locals.com or just follow along on the article at uh, lunduke.locals.com so you can see all the charts. But in blue, we have people who are left-leaning politically. In red, people who are right-leaning politically. And in green, people who identified as right in the middle. They were centrists. When people say, hey, do you prefer Firefox? Uh, overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, left-leaning people said, yeah, I preferred Firefox. I mean, well over 60% of all left-leaning people were like, I prefer Firefox. That's my browser. And when you look at all the other browsers uh, that we offered here as options, and again, we did not offer in this poll every single browser. We simply offered a cross-section of the most popular plus a, a smattering of the uh, uh, of kind of the the alternative browsers. So we have Firefox, Brave, Chrome, Safari, Vivaldi, Edge, and Opera. And what was amazing to me was when you look at that chart, left-leaning people went for Firefox and then kind of nothing else. There was a little bit for Brave, a little bit for Chrome, almost nothing for Safari, tiny bit for Vivaldi and Edge, and then almost nothing for Opera. But then you look over at the, the centrists, and the centrists start to move. They start to move away from Firefox. And you can see the, the bar for Firefox dropping for centrists. And the, the Brave bar almost doubles. And Chrome, it grows increasingly up as well. And Safari, it just explodes. And Vivaldi grows. Edge actually goes down, interestingly enough. But then you get over to the right-leaning people. People who say they are politically on the right, and you see quickly, overwhelmingly, they don't, they don't like Firefox as their number one browser anymore. They like Brave. 
overwhelmingly, over 40% of them are like, yeah, brave. And, and, and to a lesser degree, 30 some odd percent for Firefox. And then, and then kind of a, a, a mix for, for the remainder of the browsers. That is amazing. And, and I, I want to be very, very clear that this, this data, the survey this data comes from, was from, again, IT professionals and computer nerds, which means that while this provides us a very detailed look at the tech world, it does not represent the broader populace. It does not represent, in other words, non-nerds. While there may be similar correlations in the general populace outside of the tech world, that is well beyond the scope of this particular survey. Uh, this is for nerds or people in the tech world or tech enthusiasts, but this is, this is who we are representing in this survey. So if you're looking at this and you're thinking, well, this doesn't feel like it lines up with the broader populace, well, these are for nerds. And in fact, when you start to figure in the fact that this is the tech populace that is making these choices, and by and large, well over 60% of the nerds on the left politically are saying they choose Firefox over everything else. And you start to compare that against the broader Firefox numbers, which are in the couple percentage points. You start to realize that Firefox might not have much of any representation in the broader populace. It may be limited. We'd have to sit down and really crunch the numbers on this, but, but at first glance, that means that nerdy left-wing people may represent the vast majority of people who even use Firefox at all. We'll need to dig into that some more. Uh, but continuing on, let's, let's dial into just the two big browsers for a minute here. This is Firefox and Brave. Again, look at those. Look at the switch that happens there. It is almost reversed. It's it's a mirror image of each other almost, almost. Uh, Left-wing users go hardcore for Firefox and right-wing users go hardcore for Brave and centrists are in the middle. <laughs> They're literally centered. <laughs> and it's an extreme difference. I mean, the, the difference is overwhelming. Um, one other thing that I, I want to wanna, wanna point out here that I found fascinating was right-wing people tend to be more spread out. Uh, in their web browser usage, right? They use more of the minor browsers than the leftists do. I, I think that's that's absolutely absolutely fascinating. Um, uh, in fact, here I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this up here and show the same data using a different chart here, just to show how different this is. The left leaning users tend to have a <laughs> And, and I, I couldn't come up with a better word to use here, but it's an entertaining word to use. But they lack diversity when it comes to web browsers. <laughs> Left-leaning users go, they go all in hard on Firefox. And they tend to shy away from any minority browsers. Whereas right-wing users, right-leaning politically users of web browsers tend to dabble. Uh, you start to see growth among Vivaldi, uh, 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 Safari even, and, and, and growth along those lines. And not so much in Chrome. Uh, you don't see a whole lot of growth in Chrome, but you see that big growth in, gray, in Brave. It's a much more spread out usage than, than you see with less left wing. Uh, uh, web browsers. So right-wing web browsers are more diverse web browsing wise than left-wing web browsing people. That, I think that's worth pointing out because it's weird. Now, um, th 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 this is worth thinking about for a minute because these results may kind of feel obvious because at first glance, this data makes a ton of sense. Um, over the last few years, Mozilla, the parent company behind Firefox, has made a habit of courting left-leaning users and pushing away those on the political right. Uh, investments in leftist causes, and I, and I link to some of the articles that talk about this sort of thing, some by me, um, some that are just blog posts from the companies. Um, statements advocating for censorship of conservatives. Uh, a lot of you may remember the let's do more than deplatforming when when the, the, the head of Mozilla or one of the heads of Mozilla was calling for um, the removal of people with conservative ideas from the internet. 
It's a weird thing to do. Uh, and of course, there was the the ouster of Brendan Eich as their CEO. Uh, so Brent, Brendan Eich contributed to a cause that was that was definitely much more right wing politically, um, and it caused a huge firestorm and uh, resulted in him resigning from Mozilla, but kind of resigning by force for, as the CEO of Mozilla. And then Brendan Eich goes and founds Brave. And so you, it kind of makes sense that you see a lot of people that I think were probably using Firefox or something else say, oh, well, there's the conservative guy. He's going over and he's making that web browser. Well, if a conservative dude that just got canceled, for lack of a better word, from Mozilla creates his own web browser, that's probably the web browser for me. I mean, I think that's what a lot of a lot of conservative leaning and, and right leaning people tend to think. So they've moved over to Brave. That, of course, is 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 just speculation, right? That's just thinking, oh, well, that seems to be what's happening, or that's what we guess might be happening, or that's what I did, so I assume other people did. Well, now we have numbers. Uh, we have we have real hard numbers that show exactly that. That, that may not be the cause for this dynamic shift, but it makes sense that it would be. Um, uh, what we, we do have here, though, is a clear correlation between a person's political leanings and which web browser they use. And I find that fascinating. I find it fascinating that we have a very clear-cut example right now of people in one demographic opt to use this piece of software that does this task and people of a separate political leaning saying i'm going to use a completely separate piece of software to perform the same task because because they don't trust each other you notice you're not seeing left-leaning people choose brave you're just not uh, you're not at, I mean, I mean, 12.6 uh, people who identified as left-leaning said that they preferred the Brave web browser. Clearly, some do. But 42.3% of right-leaning people said, yeah, I prefer Brave. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a big switch. And, and, and centrists, again, fall like perfectly in the middle almost. I mean, not exactly, but really close. Uh, and that's, that's uh, it's startling to me, at least for the top two. Once you break out of Firefox and Brave and you start looking at, um, you, know, you know, Safari and Vivaldi and Edge and Opera and, and Chrome, the, the numbers get a little bit different. But none of those really seem to have the same numbers, the same, the same hold over the nerds and IT professionals that Firefox and Brave do. Whatever is happening in the browser wars, as far as the nerds are concerned, Firefox and Brave have won. <coughs> now, I know that Brave utilizes the Chrome, Chrome's rendering engine, right? So in a lot of ways, uh, it's, it's, you could say, oh, it's a version of Chrome, but just the same, right? Leaning users prefer Brave over Chrome by a massive margin. Massive. Massive. Uh, now, what will be interesting to see is um, as time goes on, what will happen with this split? Will this split continue to spread outside of the tech world? Will this split change within the tech world? Will it become more extreme than it already is? I'm, I'm not 100% certain, but we'll keep tracking it in order to keep keep tabs on all of this. Because as of right now, I, I believe this is the only study that's been done along these lines to date. Uh, so, so, but now we know. Now we know where people who are left leaning and people right who are right leaning stand vis-a-vis -vis current web browsers. It's kind of fascinating. Anyway, uh, head on over to conservativenerds.locals.com if you want to read this article. It's free for everybody. Uh, feel free to share it. Click on those, uh, those graphs. Share the graphs around. Please link to the article if you share the graphs just because it helps me out. Um, if you don't currently subscribe to uh, conservativenerds.locals.com or the Lunduke Journal in general, you can go to lunduke.com and get all the information on the Lunduke Journal family of, of publications of all the stuff that we do over there. You can subscribe subscribe for free. Uh, you can subscribe to pay, uh, which helps to support the work that we do. And of course, uh, you can subscribe uh, either 
either one site at a time or, or all in a bunch, or you can even subscribe with Bitcoin nowadays. It's crazy. It's craziness. All right, everybody. Thank you for everyone who helped support the work that we do. Thank you for everyone who took the time to uh, answer the ma this massive survey. I know it was huge, but the data that we're getting from it is absolutely spectacular. I'll be publishing the spreadsheet the anon with anonymous data of everything so that all of you can not just check the things that I'm reporting on, but that all of you can go in and see if there's additional cool things that I missed, uh, additional correlations that are worth calling out. I'm sure there are lots. With 46 different questions and a huge amount of data, data possibilities for each question, uh, who knows, man? There's a lot of stuff in here. I've still got a lot of diving through to do. You should see how many tabs I have on my master spreadsheet right now where I'm grouping data together and, and looking at it in different ways. And it's nuts. All right, everybody. Uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls across the inner tubes, I do declare and broadcast.